A 3D printer is a tool like any other, and just like a tool, it requires maintenance. This is my Prusa Mark III, and it's broken! And we need to fix it so it can print all the things. Let's do that. There you are, welcome back. Like I said, this is my Prusa Mark III, and it's got an issue. The bed itself won't heat, and I've diagnosed the problem to be one of the bed heater wires. This is a problem you, me, and everyone will face eventually with a 3D printer. And it's important to know that you, me, and everyone with a 3D printer has the skills to be able to replace that. I have the power! So I'm gonna take you through the steps of how to replace the bed wires, and then we're gonna do a test to make sure why I can go forward and back and the bed will work and we will be happy. That's exciting. Ugh. Bed wires on the Mark III go from the control box to the bed. And on this Mark III, you can tell they are soldered into place here and there are two pins that, uh, that the wires have the connectors that slide over them. So what we need to do is remove the cover. We need to desolder these wires and then we need to remove them from the control box. There's a couple zip ties in the way, and we're going to snip those so that we can get access to things. After we've undone those zip ties, we need to undo the wire wrap. Wire wrap is great because it keeps all of the wires together. Plus, in this case, it allows the wires to all have an easy bend. And nothing gets pinched. What Prusa does in their bed wire kit is provide a piece of 285 or three millimeter nylon and this, this nylon uh, 3D printing material, essentially, it, it's just snipped from a longer strand, and it provides a little bit of rigidity to that bend, which then gives it a more even shape. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to explain, but it makes it so it looks like this, and so it's not crunched down like that. It's, uh, it's kind of a strain relief in a way. I like it a lot, and it's a really good idea. The control box has one single screw right here you can undo with a two and a half millimeter hex drive. And that bolt attaches to a nut that's within the door, so it swings open. And once that's open, we get to look at where the wires connect. And this is where we undo the wires so that the bed wires are free from the control box, and then all we have left to do is desoldering them from the pads. This is the fun part. So the bed wires are connected to these two posts, these uh, power posts and uh, they are screwed down. 3D printer maintenance is always easier when you don't have to record yourself doing it. There we go. So this is now out, and they are just spade connectors. So this is attached via spade connectors and a screw down terminal, and that's gonna mean a nice, safe, good connection. I did remove the screw from the screw block terminal all the way, thinking that they were an eye sort of connector, but no, they are spades. So let me just put that back in. I don't know if my big meaty fingers can make, can make that happen. There we go. First try. First try. So here's the bed. And some people know this, some people don't. But this is the thermistor cable. This is the thing that's attached under the bed and it tells the printer how hot the bed is. Oh, hot. These are the power wires and these are what provide the energy to the bed for it to heat. And then this was the nylon. And that's what's inside the Prusa bed wire. Now that this is freed from the control board, we have one step left in removing, and that is desoldering this from the pad. They are soldered on there real good. These are the solder pads, and there is a lot of solder on each one. This is positive, this is ground, or GND right there. And so what I'm gonna do is heat up my soldering iron to desolder the wires from this pad and leave as much of the solder as possible because we can use it when we put the new wires in. Let's do that. So this soldering iron is from Beka. I think I got it on Amazon. It goes up to, I don't know, really hot, but it has presets, so it's, it's digital. I can just set it to 425 degrees Fahrenheit? <laughs> I think that's Fahrenheit because 425C I think would be the temperature of the sun. I also have paper towel out here. Usually you have something to rest it on and a wet sponge to drag the tip across just to clean it. Since I don't happen to have a wet sponge here, I've got an unmarked bottle of cold H2O and I'm going to soak a paper towel. I'm doing it right over my backpack with my expensive laptop in it. How's that for trust? What do you need? Oh. Well, what I've essentially made is a, a spongy sort of pad and I can clean the solder tip on there now. 
You can see it heat the solder to the point of liquidity and I remove it. Just like that. Now look, I've left both pads full of solder and now I can clean the tip just like that. Just know that you're dealing with something hot enough to, to burn you, so be careful. I've got my wire strippers. Bill over at Punished Props, he, he labeled his strippers Glenda. I got these wires from Jason over at LDO Motors and one of the things you have to check is the length. You wanna make sure that the length of the wire, the, it's longer. This wire is a little bit longer than the previous one and that's good. You wanna make sure that you have a long enough wire because as the bed is traveling back and forth, you need to know you've got the slack for it to be able to do it without, without creasing the wire or, or pulling it too tight or putting stress on it. So as long as it's got enough slack for a nice easy bend, you should be good and these ones are perfect. These are my wire strippers right here and I'm just gonna strip off a little bit. In fact, about as much as what's on these wires right here. <laughs> so maybe what, an inch? Perfect. The goal is to have a lot of wire on the solder pad, but not too much as to have a bunch hanging off, just like that. And remember, the pads are labeled VCC for positive and GND for ground, so we know where to solder them. Before we solder them to the board, I am going to tin the wires just a little bit. And tinning is where you add solder to the wire. If you look at these wires, they're kind of splayed out a bit. And these, I twisted up. There we go. So let's flatten those just a bit. There we go. See how, see how one, is, one is flattened out and one is not? So then we will flatten these out. Okay, phew. Now, tinning the wires is gonna let the solder flow a little bit easier. Hey, it worked. <laughs> there we go. Each of the wires is tinned and it means I should be able to put them over here. So let's do that. We'll do positive first. It's nice and hot and then we can put that in there. And that's in, positive wires in. Now we'll take ground. Okay, cleaned off the tip of the soldering iron and I'm gonna leave it on just for now while we check these. Okay, so that's a good Okay, and that's good as well. So we've got two really good solder joints. Now we connect the wire back up into the control box, put the nylon back, make sure the thermistor wire is safe, put the wrap back on, <laughs> get some zip ties at the end. Let's just get that done. This is that nylon piece, remember that? So what we wanna do is put that in its spot. There's a little hole in the control box that you can poke it into. That's just kinda like its home base. Why didn't you just go home? And then it will attach like that. Now comes the wire wrap, and this is never the, the easy part, is it? Or maybe it is. Maybe there's some sort of wire wrap skill. I certainly don't have it. I'm gonna try to stick some inside the control box. And that's because there's a zip tie that goes across and holds it in place. Now a couple handy dandy zip ties. I don't think that's going anywhere. Now let's put a zip tie up in the control box. There we go. And that zip tie is just gonna keep everything tight against the control box. And then with the nylon, we have ourselves a really good path of travel. In fact, let's verify that. Great success. And just like that, we've done the fix to the Prusa Mark III bed wires. They're powered on. Look at that, ready to go. Okay, first we make sure that this number over here is rising. 20, 22, 24, awesome. So now by going back and forth, we can make sure that it's still delivering the power, which it is, because the numbers keep going up and the wires seem to be doing a good job. This is great, now we have to do the test print and I'm kind of curious. I don't know if this is gonna succeed. Will we see a min temp error? I don't know. Let's find out. And just like that, the print is done and it looks like it succeeded. No min temp errors. Here's what I did for a model. I went into Prusa Slicer and I cut the bottom 0.5 millimeters off of a Chep cube. <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. And then what I did is I stretched it on Y to 200 millimeters, 
and that gave me a 20 by 200 by 0 0.5 model. And with the first layer being 0.3 and then the second and above being 0.2, that gave us the 0 0.5 and it worked great. And the reason I did that is because this model was going to exercise Y almost to its limits on either side. And then with the diagonal infill, it's going to shift it back and forth on Y as it's moving it. And that's gonna exercise that cable. And it worked, it really, really worked. I'm amazed with 3D printing every day. It's a wonderful hobby or business such as this or people who make products. Uh, where you or me or anyone can just fix the problems with the machines. The machines themselves are easily fixed and teaches you more about it. And it's just, it's exciting to know that this 3D printer right here now goes back into the circle of trust because I trust it now. It's fixed, it's working, and it's gonna print all the things. If you made it this far, you're awesome. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and me and others will do our best to answer them. <sighs> Hug each other more. And as always, high five. Yeah, this Bruce is still in my lab. It's been out of service for a while. We just fixed the bed wiring and a video is coming out soon to show you how to do it if you have that problem as well. But, but I still love it. I do. We're gonna, ah, uh, yeah. Print quality is a little suspect. It's out my face. But look at that. Look at it.